What do you make of this prepared statement given out by the utilities company? Exactly. Now, I want you to hop up to Graham's house and get a personal statement out of him. Why pick on me? Whenever newspaper men in the business have tried to see that old buzzard, they can't get by his front door. Am I Houdini? Yeah, sometimes. Here, wait a minute. Here's a lead for you. If you can't get to Graham, locate Gloria Palmer. She'll lead you right to him. You know, wherever he is, she won't be far away. Yeah? Listen, that romance is as dead as last year's World Series. One of these days, your headline will read, Follies, Beauty, Wed Bracketeer. Gloria's been running around with Tony Marchetti the last few weeks. Good, that's better still. Watch Tony, too. He's using her for a come on so he can get his hooks into Graham's dough. Now get up there and get the story, Stephen, and it'll make you. Make me what? And me with two tickets to the football game. The biggest story of the year, and you talk to me about football tickets. Do you realize, Steve, that thousands of people will be affected if Graham Utility smashes? You think about them. I'm thinking about the football game. Three o'clock, I find me on the old 50-yard line, yelling my head off from my alma mater. Graham will have to send his statement in by mail. Are you going to Graham's? No. Yes, you are. Oh, no, I'm not. Wait here, I'll be back in 15 minutes. Yeah, that's what you said the last time. You owe me 2140 right now. Gee, you might at least offer to put some gas in the car. Well, I am surprised. Do you really think I'd try to jip you? Yes. Now, you know that's the wrong answer, Mike. Listen, this is the home of John Graham, the millionaire. I've got a date with him. And as soon as I come out, I've got to rush right back to the office. Now, if you wait for me, I'll not only pay you, but I'll fill your tank with gas. What do you say? All right. Thanks, Mike. You can go now. Here's what I owe you. Hey, how about my gas? Take my carpet of the soda. How do you do, Mr. Graham? Graham? My name is Marion. Frank Marion. You have my reservation. Oh, yes, I have them. Your stateroom is room 74. Do it. I just left here, Mr. Graham. Is Mr. Marriott. Frank Marriott. What's his stateroom number? I've got to see him a minute before the ship sails. 74. Thanks. Well, that depends. 
some go for a rest, some go to broaden their minds, and uh, some for the certain utility of magnets going. Now, I know you've been picking the field. Tell me, ain't Not on your life. I never did like the ocean. No? No. Well, you better start getting used to it. Why? Come on, kid. I'll see you in the spring. <laughs> for your health or by request. Now, what do you think? You look pretty healthy. If I'm going to spend five days on this tub, I'd better find a place to sleep. I'll be seeing you. Jane, think we were lost? Well, I've certainly been wondering what you two have been doing for the last couple of hours. Captain and I have been reminiscing. Oh, but Percy, listen, this is serious with me. Come here, will you? All I've got to do is radio my paper and they'll send the money. Well, it is a little unusual, but I guess it'll be all right. Ah, oh, that's fine. Hope the old man's in a good humor when he gets this. Will you? And when the money comes, deduct the charge. Very good. Yes? Yeah. 
There you are. Take those. Well, what are these? Those are two tickets for the football game this afternoon. I don't believe I'm going to be able to make it. Thanks! What the hell? What the... Say, this is one game I'll never think. <laughs> um, let's have that one. Well, I don't mind if I do. And I can get under my without your interpreter. So? I'd have been here a lot sooner if that old ham actor out there hadn't detained me. Who do you mean? The old bozo stand over there at the bar. That's very interesting. Yeah, I've seen him in all these plays. Uh-oh, here he comes. Hang on to your seat. I'll get rid of him.
plenty. Was it Grant? Sure it is. He shaved off his mustache and he's wearing glasses. Why do you suppose he wouldn't let me in a statement? You know, there's something phony about this whole business. Why, he's trying to give you the runaround, but he won't get away with it. I saw enough money and bombs in his cabin to put us on easy street for life. John, what are you doing for the Seaman's Fund this trip? Nothing yet. Have you any suggestions? Say, why don't we put on an old melodrama? You must have some manuscript in your trunk. That's a good idea, Haynes. Yes. We might do her father's revenge. That's short and only a few characters. Can we depend on you, Jane? Well... In view of the great respect you have for our family uh, talents, I could hardly refuse. <clears throat> uh, that's swell. You have some costumes on board, haven't you, Captain? Yes, a lot of them we use for our fancy dress ball. Okay, right after lunch we'll all get together and pick out a costume. What about you, Gloria? Sure, I'll help. And tell me, what can you do? You know what I can do. Oh, but this is not that kind of a show. You better operate the spotlight. All right, everybody here is called for rehearsal at 2 o'clock. Captain's order. We just have time for a swim. Come on. Captain's orders? Right. Father, I go on this trip, the better I like it. Why? Well, there's everything here to please a newspaper man's heart. There's love, there's romance, there's mystery. What's the mystery? You. Somebody stole my swimming trunk. I can't take a swim. What kind of trunks were they? Well, they were the... Hey, these look just like them. And also the robe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, you come down to the room and I'll let you have mine. I think they'll just fit. You're a swell guy. Now, you run along. Cool. Come on. We better get dressed and get ready for that show.
that night? I've lost everything. And penniless. I know. It means we'll have to go back 20 years now. It's incredible. To think that one man can wipe out the life savings of thousands. Jane. I've planned so much for her. A man like that deserves to be shot. Now remember, boys, the first horse slow and then step. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. That's bad news about the grand price, isn't it, Captain? Very. Would it surprise you to know that Graham was on this ship? On this ship? Yeah. I followed him here from his house. That's why I made the trip. I wanted to get a statement. Graham here? Sure. Sitting right over there. Miss Palmer, it's ready, sir. Okay. Now, will you all run over your lines while uh, Miss Palmer does her number? Ladies and gentlemen, we will open our evening's entertainment with a song entitled, Oh Willie, Oh Willie, Come Back, which will be sung by Miss Gloria Palmer, late of the Fowler. Gloria? The devil is so and hang on. The show will go on immediately after the overture. All right, boys, gear. Yeah. Gee, the place is crowded. It's going to be a great show. Everything all set? I just learned that Mr. Warren is in. You can't play the ball. Mr. Warren is. Yes. I know just the man for that. Well, Mr. Merrin, we have a jam. One of our cats was taken ill suddenly. You're just the man to play the part. There's only a few lines. It'll be easy. Oh, all right. Is your costume all right, Mr. Merrin? 
That's fine. Miss Kent, you're going to be right here when you get ready for Thank you. Now, Tony, be sure and keep that spot on the stage. Okay. Hey, what's the matter with this spotlight? I don't know. Well, where's the switch on that thing? Down here somewhere. What's the matter with you? Why don't you keep that thing on? You want to ruin the whole show? Someone kicked the plug out. Well, watch it. All right, folks, now get ready. The overture's about over. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is going to be great. Gee, we've got a lot of people out there, haven't we?
Shot through the heart. Passengers, please leave the salon. Let me see that gun, Henry. You will all go to your rooms at once and keep yourselves in readiness for questioning. I'll hold a formal inquest as soon as possible. Don't worry, Jane. This is an unfortunate accident. I don't think so, Captain. He was murdered. On what do you base your suspicions? Well, I can't tell you just yet. I've got my own ideas about this thing, and if you don't mind, I'd like to do a little investigating on my own. I'd be glad of your help. When are you going to hold the inquest? Tomorrow morning. I think I'll have a little dope for you by that time. Do you mind if I take that gun? Of course not. I'll report to you later. This isn't the gun you loaned us for the show, is it? No, sir. The gun I loaned you was a Colt. This is a Remington. That's all I wanted to know. Thanks. You're investigating Graham's room and somebody came in and we had a scuffle and I got cracked on the head. Feel better now? Yeah, I'm all right. It's just a bum. Could you recognize your assailant? No, it's too dark. Oh. Place has been ransacked. All his valuables are missing. Valuable? Yes. The person informs me he had a fortune in cash and securities. Did he get everything? Yes. The man who attacked you is the murderer of Graham. Steve, if you're feeling better now, I think I'll go back to my cabin. I'll be all right. I remember. Keep your chin up. Nothing to worry about. What are you, pounds about me? Yeah. First that all collect. Yes. Come in here and take a radiogram.
we don't seem to be playing. I get my money. Stop. Price now two thousand. Charge it. Hope it says that. That isn't it. All right, all right. How much is it? That would be uh, seven fifty.
whose coat is this? 64. Belongs to a steward named Lindner. Thanks, buddy. He died from concussion of the brain. And he's the only man on this ship that knows who changed those guns. I'm sorry, sir. I've searched the entire ship and can't find him. It's just as much your duty to help solve this murder. It's a little unusual, but... Uh... Then you'll do it? Thanks, Doctor. Work this off to Haynes. This will straighten him out on that Graham matter. involved in this thing in the Veranda Cafe in one hour. All right. Thank you. Captain, the steward has regained consciousness. He told? Yes. I put out the light and changed the guns. I want to give you my reason. The day before we sailed on this voyage, I met the real John Graham. And he induced me to invest all my savings in one of his enterprises. He knew, must have known, that at that moment his empire was crumbling. <coughs> Captain, the loss of all your money hardly justifies murder. <coughs> Maybe not, if I were young. But when a man is past 65, making his last voyage before retiring on a pittance, 
That's different. <coughs> My wife and I had picked out a little place in Connecticut where together we had hoped to coast into our final port. That dream is over. Bernard, what the word newspaper man means. And he fired me. 